the Kraft Foods Company presents Willard Waterman as the Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> Great Gildersleeve is brought to you each week by the Kraft Foods Company. Famous over the years for the finest in cheese, Kraft now brings you the finest in cheese slices. Their Kraft Deluxe Slices. Extra delicious pasteurized processed cheese in perfect slices. No slivers, no dried edges, no broken pieces, but really perfect slices wrapped and sealed right in the spick and span Kraft plant. Look for Kraft Deluxe Slices in neat half-pound packages. Eight big slices of delicious processed cheese to the package. You'll find them in your grocer's dairy case. Convenient, delicious, Kraft Deluxe Slices. About three weeks, there should be a new arrival in the great Gildersleeve's house. Marjorie and Bronco are going to be Mama and Papa. And is our water commissioner proud? Right now, he's looking in the window of the Summerfield baby shop. Let's see what they have. Well, that playpen would be nice for the baby. You wonder what the price is. You, why do they always turn the price tags upside down? Hello, Gilday. Well, Judge Hooker. What are you trying to do, Gilday? Climb in that pen and play? <laughs> Certainly not, Judge. I'm looking for ideas for Marjorie's baby. Oh, of course. Isn't this an attractive window? Look there. Pink booties. I had pink booties when I was a baby. An old goat with pink booties. <laughs> What do you plan to buy for the baby, Gilda? Well, I don't know, but I'll have to go easy. I have so many other expenses. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I was trying to see the price tag on this playpen, but I can't do it without standing on my head. If you stand on your head out here, I'll buy it for you. <laughs> Very funny. Oh, look. This little bonnet is cute, Gilda. Tied under the chin, it would look fetching on any baby. Well, everything in there is cute, Judge. I'd like to buy Marjorie the playpen. And that woolly blanket, and that bottle warmer. Say, an electric bottle warmer. I could use that to heat up my oxtail bra. Yo, my goodness. Before retiring, I always have a warm cup of oxtail broth with my rye crisp. It's good for the figure. Yes, yes. Judge, look at those Peter Rabbit pajamas. Cute. I'd like to buy those, too. Gilda, you amuse me. Yes, I... You stop by to get an idea for a gift... And now it's practically turned into a shower. Well, I guess I can't afford all these things. I... Say, come to think of it, why don't I give Marjorie a baby shower? You? Certainly. I'll invite you, Peavy, and the rest of my friends. Gilda, you can't give Marjorie a shower. You're the head of the family. What's wrong with that? It isn't socially correct. That shower should be given by someone in Marjorie's crowd. Yeah, judge, she's been given some of those, and frankly, there wasn't much loot. <laughs> Oh? This time I want to get into a higher bracket. Well, I still maintain that a shower should be given by one of Marjorie's girlfriends. You say, why can't it be given by one of my girlfriends? What? That's it, Horace. And it won't be a shower, it'll be a cloudburst. <laughs> Nobody's going to say Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve does the wrong thing socially. Yeah, I wouldn't give Marjorie a baby shower. Since I'm her uncle, it would look too mercenary. Yeah, I'll just talk Catherine into giving the shower. Of course, I want it to be her idea. I'll have to be diplomatic. Yeah, that comes easy to me. Oh, Throckmorton. Hello, Catherine. May I come in? You may for a few minutes. Well, you're wearing your pretty nurse's uniform. Thank nice. you. Nice. Thank you. I'm due at the hospital soon. You well, I'll only take a minute. What's on your mind? You my mind? You know, what makes you think there's something on my mind? Well, you're usually at the office this time of day. Oh, you know, I know. Will Marjorie's baby coming next month? I have to give some time and thought to the little family. Oh, of course. How is Marjorie? Oh, you know, she's fine. Now then, I just had a discussion with Judge Hooker about baby showers. 
Oh? It seems there's a big man in town who wants to give Marjorie a shower. If the judge agrees with me that it wouldn't be proper. Why not? Well, in the first place, it should be given by a girl. Somebody close to the family. Uh-huh. Your girlfriend of Marjorie's, you know. Or it uh, could be a girlfriend of mine. I see. Brock Morton, do you think I'm close enough to the family? Well, you're close to what I had in mind. <laughs> yeah, that's a wonderful idea, Captain. So thoughtful of you. Well, I've often considered it, but since Marjorie has her own circle of friends, I didn't want to be pushy. Yeah, I understand. You're just like me. I hate to be pushy. Ah. Uh, now, let's see. I could arrange it for this Saturday night, if that isn't too soon. No, that'll be fine. Of course, we're awfully busy at the hospital. Well, I'll be glad to take care of all the details for you, Catherine. Will you? Sure. We'll invite the Peavies, Judge Hooker, and Rumson Bullard. He's rich and likes to give nice presents. <laughs> Rumson phoned me today. Yeah, you did? You did? Mm, he's awfully nice. Yeah, that Bullard trying to steal my girl. He wanted me to go dancing. Yeah, that settles it. He won't be invited present or no present. But I told him I had to work at the hospital. Good. Fine little hospital. <laughs> I'd better go there right now, Doc Morton. It's nice of you to help me with the shower. Well, glad to do it, Catherine. Just leave everything to me. I'll get Bertie to help the refreshments. All you have to do is meet the guests at the door. Wonderful. And Throckmorton. Yes? Wouldn't it be a nice gesture to invite that big man who wanted to give Marjorie the shower? Oh, yes. Good idea. I wonder if she saw through me. <laughs> I'll just slip back to the kitchen and have a talk with Bertie. The shower has to be a surprise for my... Oop. Is that Bullard and his Cadillac honking at me? Hi, Aunt. Want to go for a spin? Leroy! What's he doing at the wheel of Bullard's car? Hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. Yeah, oh, he's sitting with Bullard's little niece. Hello, Brenda. Leroy, you shouldn't be in Mr. Bullard's car. Why not? I'm a good driver. I just drove all the way from Niagara Falls. Niagara Falls? We've been honeymooning. <laughs> oh, just pretending, eh, kids? Aren't you, Leroy? Yeah. <laughs> How do you like my bridal veil, Mr. Gildersleeve? Yeah, pretty. Idaho potato sack. <laughs> and look at my bridegroom. <laughs> oh, yes, with a stock of salary in his buttonhole. Isn't Leroy handsome? <laughs> yes, yes. Well, have fun. Just cut the honeymoon when I call you for dinner, Leroy. Okay, Aunt. Well, here comes Bertie from the store. Yeah, we offered the driver to Kansas City for some steaks, but she only wanted stew meat, so I let her walk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what a boy. Even Miss Gilfleet. Hello, Bertie. Before you go in the house, I'd like to discuss a little something. Yes, sir. Yeah, I don't want Margie to know about this. But I'm planning a baby shower for her. A shower for Miss Marjorie? Ain't that nice? Yeah, it's going to be quite a party. Hey, Alex, what are we having it? No, Leroy, it doesn't concern you. No? We're having it at Miss Milford's, Bertie. And I'd like you... If it's for Marjorie and the baby, why can't Brenda and I come? Oh, I'd love to. <laughs> no, children, this is for grown-ups. Why, heck, I'm going to be an uncle, and uncles are grown-ups. Yeah, not necessarily, my boy. Bertie, don't you think Brenda and I should come to Marge's shower? Leroy, don't you get me into this. Bertie's neutral. <laughs> Leroy, there won't be any children there. Who's a child? Oh, my goodness. We're not wanted, Leroy. Come on, let's drive to Chicago, Illinois. Oh, I don't want to pretend anymore. Why not, Leroy? That's kid stuff. And I'm an uncle. Oh, what a problem, child. Yeah, I mean problem uncle. What a busy little mother to be. Here, what are you knitting this evening, Margie? Uh, these are booties, Anki. Oh, nice. But I wouldn't work too hard, my dear. 
Somebody might give you things like that. Oh, good. Say, what was wrong with Leroy tonight? Leroy? He hardly touched his dinner. He was a little moody, wasn't he? And then he rushed across the street to Brenda's. He wouldn't tell me what was bothering him. Well, it's a secret. Oh, a secret? Well, tell me, Auntie. No, Marjorie. Well, you know you can't keep secrets from me. Tell me. Yeah, I think I'll run across the street and see what I can do to cheer up Leroy. Auntie, what's this all about? Not a thing. See you later, my dear. Ta-ta. Auntie! Well, Leroy may be a little bit upset about the shower now. Good a couple of tickets to hop along, Cassidy. He'll cure that. She, uh, kids change their minds every five minutes. Uh oh, there's Bullard getting in his car. I don't want to mention Catherine's party to him. I'll just hide behind this lamppost until he drives off. He, I, 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 I made it. He didn't see me. Peekaboo! <laughs> yeah, hello, Mr. Bullard. Good evening, Gildersleeve. I didn't know if that was you or if Bertie had just set out the barrel of cans. <laughs> Well, it's me tonight. Cans tomorrow night. <laughs> yeah, I was just tying my shoe. Oh, oh, well, I was just leaving for the club in a game of billiards. Nothing better to do. Good. Have you seen Leroy? Uh, he's inside with Brenda and the housekeeper. Uh, Gildersleeve, we haven't done the town in quite a while. What about Saturday night? Uh, Saturday night? Yes. Why don't we go out with your girl? <laughs> with my girl? What a neighbor. Well, Bullard. I, uh... Called Catherine today. I know. What a lovely voice. In fact, what a lovely woman. Now, see here, Bullard. I'm very fond of Catherine, and she's very fond of me. <laughs> well, she is. Gildersleeve, you may as well know that I'm very fond of her myself, so watch out. <laughs> no, wait a minute, Bullard. That isn't fair. All is fair in love and war. And this is war. <laughs> He's a hard man to like. Why, right, George, he won't see Catherine tomorrow night. I wouldn't have him at that baby shower if he offered to pay the hospital bill. Well, I'd better square things a little Leroy. Leroy! Oh, Leroy! Yeah? Will you step out here for a minute, my boy? Okay. Come on, Brenda. Hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. Hello, Brenda. Hey, look, kiddies. I just thought of something for you to do while we're at the shower. Yeah? How would you like two tickets to hop along Cassidy? And popcorn money. Leroy, don't look at me like that. We've seen the picture. Anyway, that's kid stuff. I've put my guns away. You did, my boy? Yeah. When a man's going to be an uncle, it sobers him. <laughs> I want to do the things you do, Unc. You know, now, look, kiddies, if you don't care about seeing Hopalong, why don't you give a little party of your own? A party? Sure. You pretended you went to Niagara Falls. You could pretend you're giving a shower for Marjorie. You could even invite some of your little friends. That's a wonderful idea, Leroy. Well, we can have it at my house. Uncle Rumson will buy the ice cream. Yeah? Keen, when could we have it? Well, how about tomorrow night? Oh, Mr. Gildersleeve, that's a dreamy idea. Thanks for suggesting it. You're not at all. Glad to help. Yo, Brenda... One more suggestion. What is it, Mr. Gildersleeve? Well, why don't you get your Uncle Rumson to chaperone your shower? Yeah, I happen to know he isn't doing anything tomorrow night. You think he would, Brenda? Oh, he'll do anything for me. Come on, Roy, let's get off the invitation. Yeah, that's the idea. Gildersleeve, you're clever. <laughs> Gildersleeve will be back in just a moment. Now you can enjoy the most delicious pasteurized processed cheese you ever tasted. And you can enjoy it in perfect slices. They're Kraft Deluxe Slices, and you'll find eight big sandwich size slices in each neat half pound package. These wonderful Kraft Deluxe Slices are different from any sliced cheese you ever had before because Kraft Slices are made a completely new way. Instead of being cut from a loaf, Kraft Deluxe Slices are actually formed by an exclusive new Kraft invention that captures every single bit of the fine, delicious processed cheese flavor in every perfect slice. Then, so they'll come to you clean and sanitary and perfect, with no slivers or dried edges, 
Kraft Deluxe Slices are wrapped right in the spick and span Kraft plant. And they're wrapped in such convenient, neat packages. You can keep several kinds of Kraft Deluxe Slices in your refrigerator because those neat packages take up so little room. So tomorrow, look for them in your grocer's dairy case. Those perfect slices of extra delicious processed cheese. Kraft Deluxe Slices. Well, let's get back to the great Gildersleeve. At times, the water commissioner amazes himself at the slick way he maneuvers things. When Leroy and little Brenda wanted to attend the shower he's arranging for Marjorie, was the great man stymied? No, sir. He cleverly suggested they give a party themselves. Now it's the following morning, and the great man is heading downtown. Uh, Gildersleeve, you have a great talent for keeping everybody happy. Yeah, I guess it isn't socially correct to give a shower on such short notice. What the heck? My friends won't care. I'll start with good old Peavy. Yeah, I wonder if I should have asked him last night. No, there's plenty of time. Hello, Peavy. Hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. (laughs) What can I do for you today? Uh, Nothing, Peavy. I'm the one who's doing things for people today. You don't say. You bet. Well, would you care to pay this soda check Leroy left? Leroy's soda check? He was in with little Brenda, and they left in a big hurry. Yeah, well, he's excited, Peavy. You'll be excited, too, when you see the bill. Who? They split a banana split, ate two jumbo heavens in four minutes flat. Oh, my goodness. That's a local record in one dollar. Oh, well, you put it on my bill. Very well. From Leroy to you to the ledger. <laughs> That's passing the book. Yeah, very good, Peavy. Seems Leroy's having a little party this evening. Yeah, a great change has come over, Leroy. He's going to be an uncle, so he thinks he's grown up. Tonight, he and Brenda are pretending they're giving a shower for Marjorie. Yeah, so? Yeah, kids love to pretend. By the way, Peavy, Miss Milford is giving a real shower for Marjorie this evening. I'm making the arrangements. And you and Mrs. Peavy are invited. I'm afraid we can't make it this evening, Mr. Gildersleeve. You can't? We were counting on you. (laughs) So is Leroy. Oop. Leroy invited you? Peavy, why didn't you tell me? You didn't ask me. You you don't want to go to that party? They're just pretending. Well, they ordered five gallons of ice cream, and that's the kind of pretending I like. (laughs) Five gallons. You must be having all the kids in town. All right, Peavy. Put the ice cream in my bill. I won't have to. Mr. Bullard already paid for it. Bullard? Cash. Greetings, gentlemen. Well, here comes the judge. Peavy, don't try to change the subject. You have to come to my party. What's this about a party, Gilday? Well, Leroy invited Peavy to a party, and he's going. So am I. You too, Judge? And I may wear my little Lord Fauntleroy suit. (laughs) Judge... Catherine and I are giving a shower tonight, and we want you to come. I'm sorry, Gildy. I can't disappoint Leroy. You should have issued your invitation earlier. Leroy wrote his. He brought it around last night. Yeah, but look, fellows. Peavy, I understand Rumson Bullard is providing prizes for everyone. I'm here to tell you, he nearly bought out the store. I hope we play games. I'm good at pinning the tail on the donkey. <laughs> Yo, for Peavy, Judge, it's nice of you to want to humor Leroy. But you'll have more fun at my party. We're going to have hats and favors. And we're going to play Monopoly. It's lots of fun. Besides, there'll be nobody at Bullard's but kids. Well, I wouldn't say that. (laughs) All right, go to his party. There'll be plenty of people coming to mine. I wonder who will come. It's all right, Floyd. Yeah, sure. Have a good time at Leroy's party. You'll see you around. Goodbye. Yeah, nobody else to ask. That Leroy shanghaied all my guests. Well, I guess I had it coming. The only people at Catherine's party will be Catherine and me. Hi, Uncle. Hello, Leroy. Boy, am I bushed. 
Joe, what have you been doing? I've been getting hats and favors, and I've been talking to the caterer. Caterer? Sure. Mr. Bullard said, go the limit. When you get a caterer, that's as far as you can go. <laughs> oh, brother. Leroy, didn't you know I was arranging Catherine's shower for tonight? Heck no. I know you had one cooking, but you didn't say when. Well, it's tonight. Yeah? Mr. Peavy, Judge Hooker, Mr. Munson, and even the mayor's coming to my party. Yeah, I know. Who's coming to yours? Well, there'll be... Now, see here, young man. It's not polite to ask. Okay. Hey, I think I'll get Chief Gates to park cars tonight. Wish I'd thought of Chief Gates. Unky, is that you down there? Yes, my dear. Good thing I didn't mention the shower to Marjorie. Oh, Unky, did Leroy tell you? Yes, tell me what? He and Brenda are giving me a shower tonight. They are? Well, well, well. <laughs> Isn't it sweet? Just think, it was all Leroy's idea. Yes, yes. I lost my guess, and now I'm losing credit for the idea. I have to go press a dress, Unky. Bye now. Ta-ta, my dear. Well, there goes the guest of honor. I'll just have to call Catherine and admit that I bungled it. Gildersleeve, you moved too slowly. Yeah, perhaps it's a good thing I did. If I'd engaged a caterer like Leroy, I would be in trouble. Hello? Hello, Catherine. This is Throckmorton. Oh, hello, Throckmorton. Uh, about the shower. I'm afraid we have to change our plans a little. Yes, I know. Very clever of you to move the shower over to Rumson's. You, I thought you was that. <laughs> Leroy told me he seems to have completely taken over for you, Throckmorton. You, well, uh, yes, he has. Mm. I think Rumson's home is a much better place to have the shower. He has so much room. Yeah, but Catherine, you worked it out beautifully, Throckmorton. Yeah, thank you. But... I have to make a quick trip to the hospital, and I won't be off until eight, so I'll meet you at the shower. Yeah, but goodbye. But. Here I... How can I meet her at the shower? I'm not even invited. <laughs> I thought of the idea. Now everybody's going except me. How did this happen? Mr. Gilsleeve, everybody else is getting dressed. Ain't you going to the shower? No, Bertie. Well, what about that nice present you bought for Miss Marjorie? Well, I'll just leave it on her pillow. Yes, sir. Mr. Gilsleeve, Leroy would be glad to invite you to his shower if he knew you wasn't having one. Bertie, when a grown man has botched the works, it's hard to admit it to a little boy. <laughs> Leroy's no little boy, Mr. Gilsleeve. Don't you remember? He's gone adult. Imagine him giving a baby shower. Yeah, and I'd like to be there. But I can't ask Leroy to invite me. After all, I didn't invite him. No, sir. I guess I could get in, though. If I went as a caterer. <laughs> no, I wouldn't trust myself carrying pies around. I might push one right in Bullard's face. <laughs> yes, sir. Of <laughs> course, Miss Milford's going to be there. Yeah, I know, Bertie. And Mr. Bullard's going to be glad she is. But, Bertie... And Mr. Bullard's going to be glad you ain't. Oh, my. <laughs> yeah. Suppose I should go, just out of courtesy to Miss Milford. Yes, sir. Mr. Bullard doesn't worry me. Not for a minute. No, sir. Miss Milford isn't going to forget me just because I'm not there. No, sir. In fact, she'll probably leave the shower early if I'm not there. Yes, sir. In that Cadillac. <laughs> <laughs> she might at that. Bullard said, this is war. And if I know him, he'll start advancing tonight. <laughs> uh, I'm worried. Alf, who's trying to break down the door? Yeah, I'm coming. Bullard. Gildersleeve, I need your help. You do? Come in. I haven't time. You know that party Leroy and Brenda are giving? Yeah, do I? Well, they ran after a movie, and I'm stuck with it. Movie? But they were so enthusiastic about the shower. That was before a new Hopalong Cassidy came to the hitching post. Uh, I thought Uncle Leroy had put his guns away. Gildersleeve, you have to help me. I don't even know who's invited to this party. You don't? No, they didn't even leave me a guest list. Well, I can tell you one person who's invited. Who? Me. <laughs> well, go shave and come on over. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, I'll be there in two shakes, Mr. Bullard. <laughs> yeah, I get to see Catherine after all. Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. Yeah, I better go shave and get Marjorie's present. Hey, Unc. Leroy. Can I see you, Miss? Yeah, of course. Yeah, what a fine boy. He came back to invite me to his little shower. I was on the way to the movies and I thought of something. Yeah, I know why you came back, Leroy. Yeah. I need 80 cents for the movies. <laughs> well, here you are, my boy. In 20 cents for popcorn. Thanks, Unc. Gee, I'm glad you're my uncle. And I'm glad you're a boy again. The Great Gildersleeve will be right back. If each member of your family has a special favorite kind of pasteurized processed cheese, here's good news. You can please them all with Kraft Deluxe Slices. These perfect slices of extra delicious pasteurized processed cheese come in five favorite varieties. There's wonderfully mellow Kraft American, Kraft American with pimentos added, nut sweet Kraft Swiss, Kraft Brick with a deep down rich taste, and sharp Old English brand. Get several so everyone can enjoy his favorite for good cheese snacks and sandwiches that are so easy to make in a jiffy. You'll find them in your grocer's dairy case, the five delicious varieties of Kraft Deluxe Slices. <laughs> oh, it was a lovely shower, Unky. So many beautiful things for the baby. Yeah, nice. Hey, look at that bullard. He thinks he's going to drive Catherine home. What did you say, Uncle Morris? Yeah, nothing, my dear. Nothing. Here's your coat, Catherine. I'll get the car. Out. You sneaky neighbor. <laughs> Yo, Mr. Bullard. What is it, Gildersleeve? He just wanted to tell you. This is a fine sleeping harness you gave Margie for the baby. Oh, I'm glad you like it. Now, if you'll excuse me. Yo, it's pretty complicated, though, Bullard. You better show me how it works so we'll know how to put it on the baby. Oh, all right. Yeah, I'll put it on you, and you can tell me if I have it right. Yeah, well, hurry up, Gildersleeve. We'll have to loosen it up to get it over my shoulders. This was made for a baby. Yeah, I didn't get it in there. A little tight. Well, it's very simple. You hook these straps, and then the child can't crawl out of bed. Yeah? Well, let's see. Mm -hmm. We'll fasten them to this chair. Yeah. See if it works. Yeah. Now, can you get up, bully? Oh, uh, no, no, I can't. I can't move. Good. Give me the keys to your car. I'm taking Catherine home. Go <laughs> to sleep! Get out of folks. <laughs> Great Gilder's Leave is played by Willard Waterman. The show is written by Paul West, John Elliott, and Andy White, and music by Robert Armbruster. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Barry Lee Robb, Lillian Randolph, Gail Gordon, Kathy Lewis, Barbara Whiting, Earl Ross, and Dick LeGrand. This is John Heaston saying goodnight for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in next Wednesday and every Wednesday for the further adventures of The Great Gildersleeve. Next time you raid the icebox or sit down for a between-meal snack, don't forget to add a little Kraft prepared mustard to that cold meat you eat or that sandwich you make. For when you add a little mustard, you add a lot of tang. There are two kinds of Kraft mustard, salad mustard with that delicately spiced mild flavor and Kraft mustard with snappy horseradish added. Have both kinds on hand. Then for extra zest in meat or cheese, just add a little mustard and you'll add a lot of tang by Kraft's Prepared Mustard. Remember the Falcon every Sunday over the station. Check your paper for time of broadcast and listen next Sunday as the Falcon solves the case of the neighbor's nightmare. <laughs> Here comes the glamorous, un-